Um, yeah. Wait. So that's press conference done. Should we just go into a, what we actually think about the match now? Then should we just go for? Just go for it. Yeah. Just go for we'll it. We're just it gonna off. go for it. We're just gonna go for it. We don't care. We're wild. We're crazy, man. We're just gonna go for it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah, I think the I think the press will actually work against this game. I think it will actually be successful. I think we went through Burnley, it didn't work. Newcastle didn't work. Who else didn't it work? It didn't really work against West Ham away, did it? No, um, no not quite. No, not really. I mean, we watched it. I mean, me and Mike, we both watched it. It was pretty bad, wasn't it? Your stand-up routine was pretty good, though. Mikey's, uh, I think we mentioned it previously, Mikey went into a little stand-up routine. Took the miss... Uh, mick out of me as well because uh i made a poor comment about best god but hey so yeah against all those teams we uh we, we don't it didn't really work did it whereas well, i think if norwich do actually want to play football and we can press them push them into the channels and get that ball back i think we can especially away from home as well i think it could be a a good game for us are you in agreement what do you reckon yeah yeah i think it's um <coughs> I don't know. I don't know that because Norwich do have something to play for. They they do have a relegation scrap to get back into. Mm-hmm. Of course, they're they're bottom of the league, aren't they? Twenty one yeah. points. They're seven points off of safety. So Indeed. if there's any time that they need to get points on the board, it's now. Yeah. Um, and Pookie's sort of gone off form at the moment. I don't think he looks bulky, player... didn't he? I don't know if you've seen that, but I was watching him. He looks bigger. I don't know. Is that just me? That's or do you? I don't know. I think that's just his size. Or oh, yeah, that's just his stature. One that's question that's I've got as well: What formation do they line up in? Four two three one. Four two three one. Yeah. How do we defend against a four two three one? Like I know uh, we line two banks of fours up and a bank of two. Bank of two. Yeah, yeah. So we make it compact. But between the two, so if Pookie's in between the two defenders, does one of them pick and one of them cover, or how do we? Okay, because against two strikers, we we uh, we struggle. struggle a little bit, don't we? Because it's literally man for man, and if there's a mistake, they punish. Whereas when we have got one, is it one you know goes tight and one drops off? How do we kind of deal with just the one striker? Talking alive, but I haven't watched that. I know, <laughs> I know, I've been to yeah, yeah, home games this year or whatever it's been. But then we've got but we've got a I double pivot sure. in front of the defense. So does one of them, you know? Uh, a drop in if they've got because they've got three if they've got three across the front they're going to have one number 10 which is probably going to be what Buendia so you can probably I, I'm just looking at it and uh, thinking Buendia if, on the right Cantwell on the left and yeah. Steven in behind okay so because I'm just looking at it I'm thinking we've got four at the back which will will cover the wingers and then you've got two backing up on Pookie and you've got two double pivots against one attacking and they've got two people in front of their defence so I feel like there's a lot of space in the middle that can be taken advantage of and i think not not for us for them there's quite a bit of yeah I mean, that's what i mean advantage of but like in all fairness the way that we seem to play especially away from home mm. we'll, we'll miss the midfield we, we just yeah. we just hit the ball forward and look like hope it goes to long but You'll get down to one of the attacking midfielders or one of the wings are confident enough if you can get in between the three and the two that space in the middle if you could cut inside and get in that pocket if you get one of them to actually uh, bait and either move and get into that pocket, I reckon you could. There is movement there, and you, there is space to work with. I think it's forty-three one's quite a compact formation, and they can, you know, you can really tight. You can almost go into a four-five-one when you're defending, aren't you? But I think especially if they, if we counter press them and try and force those mistakes, there's space to be worked around there. I think that that is something we can. Uh, we can capitalise on. Is there anything else you think we could capitalise on, Tiz? You know, you you t- you talk did. about Pookie. He he likes to run in between the lines. He like yeah. he's he's sort of a, a, a sort of gap, not really a Gary Dini striker, but he likes to run in behind his man make those runs because that's the majority of the way he gets those goals. Makes late runs into the box. He's sort of mm. that that po- that po- sort of poacher striker that that's the way he gets his goals. So he's not a big, he's not a tall lad. He's not necessarily quick. So he's got to be the, the sort of player that's smart with his movement. And you saw that at St. Mary's and his goal and it's a tidy finish as well. Mm. The way that we can pounce on their mistakes or pounce on their defensive mishaps isn't necessarily through the pressing because they've, they're not a team that's, you know, liable for mistakes. They're just poor at defending, if that makes sense. They're not someone yeah. that gives the ball away quite easily. They just not they're not very good when a team's going at them. So for me it's, it's got to be those set pieces like we saw at the home game. Put mm. the, put as many balls as we can into the box, try and win those corners, try and win those set pieces around the box. 
Um, at the moment, Crawl's in good form. He's probably one of the main reasons why they're not on 10 points rather than 21 because he's kept them yeah. quite a lot of games. You've seen it with the Tottenham game as well. With, he's, a, he's a fantastic penalty saver. So for me, it's got to be those set pieces. Yeah, fair play. And we're talking about, um, I think Ings has got to play, isn't he? He's our best finisher, by far the best goal scorer on our team. I think he's got to be in the team. Um, excuse me. Um, Shane Long is there for the outlet as well. I think that's got to be what might as well go through our actual team sheet as well. Now, we mentioned this earlier in the episode, didn't we? I can't remember the gentleman that did send in the question, but he asked who he'd play at right back. Now, it's a good pro- provider of width when we use our, our wing backs to get round. So we have the option. It seems like all of our wing backs are fit. Who would you call up and who would you keep at right back? Is it Valerie? Is he staying on despite the mistake? Would you see Walker Peters come back in? You know, like what would you what would you hope for? I think I've said this at, in the last podcast. The best way for a player to get over making a mistake is playing in the next game. I totally agree, yeah. So yeah. I'd, I'd leave Valerie there. I, I would I, as well, I don't, yeah. I don't know how much quality... I mean, Carl Walker-Peters has only played once, so I don't know how much quality he would actually bring to the team. I don't know yeah. if he's better than what we've already got. But the best way of a player making... Like, there's two ways it can go. You can either have a fantastic game like McCarthy did after making a mistake leading to a goal. He can be brilliant. Or yeah. make another mistake like Jack Stevens did at the back end of last season where he just kept going and kept going. I'll say, if he makes another mistake this game, that's when you take him off and you get yeah. a break from football. But mm-hmm. at the moment, he's, he's had so long out of football now that I just think play him again. Because you think... can only get better with more minutes. Mm. I also think it shows it shows that kind of faith in the player that he's better than just one mistake. Like if Ralph says to him, I don't care you made that mistake, you're playing again, I think it would really instill confidence into him. And hopefully he... I think as a player and as a young player, you build off those experiences and you basically, as you get older, you build that kind of thicker skin to to that criticism. And I, I yeah, I'd hope that he does get played again. Would you would you say that Valerie needs to play again, Tiz, or would you say Walker Peters? I think he's, he's got more of a future at our club than oh, yeah, Walker definitely. Peters. Because I was talking to a Tottenham fan earlier today, and he he doesn't feel like Walker Peters really has that much of a future at Tottenham because the the competitiveness at the right back spot. But then again, you know he's not as he's not as you know, agile as Walker Peters, but he's a taller player and. He's, he's just a bigger unit, you know. In the past, we've struggled with height at right back. He's so Cedric with those, you know, uh, back post crosses that we can see he's a lot. Valerie can stop that. And he's not a slow guy, and he's confident on the ball when he dribbles, when he's got the confidence flowing through him. And like I said, yeah. because we don't have a lot to challenge for this season, I feel like this is the perfect time to, like Mikey said, and you said, keep him in the team and try and let him play. But for me, do you think this is a good game for him to just come back into? You know, it's a, it's the bottom of the league. Mm. You know, there's a good chance that he's not going to get a lot of attack down that right side. Maybe, you know, Cantwell or Biff Buendia decides to play on that left-hand side because they're both very creative players that if Norwich go down, they won't be there this next season. Even, even if they do stay up, they probably won't be there this season. next season. Do you yeah. think it's a good game for him to, you know, get that recovery from? Or I don't think there's... Any easy wingers in this league? It's like there's no easy teams in this league, but every every winger that is playing out wide has either something to prove or is on good form. So I wouldn't be surprised if you know, like, you're not going to come up against a winger that's going to be an easy game. So it shows faith where if Ralph sticks with him, it's against bottom of the league, so you may give get that little bit of leeway that you might not previously get. And I think it's a uh, yeah, I, I just hope that he can uh, can bounce back, and we have that that almost that chance to almost get like a McCarthy performance. He can uh, he's got something to prove now. He can go out there and prove that he's got something to uh, something to show. Uh, yeah, but you know, uh, what would you say, Mike, to to this question? On? Of what the question <laughs> you just asked? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you not remember it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's okay. not like it. <laughs> right, well, has anyone else got anything to kind of add on the final final thoughts on the Norwich game? Do you want to go for a prediction? Do you want to go for a quick prediction? Let's go for the lineup. What, what, how else do you think we're going to change? Oh, do you think okay. do you think Ch- do you think Shane Long will start? Do you, do you think yes. Danny Ings will start? I think it'll be a pretty standard team that we're thinking of. I think Ralph knows the people that can play his system and will stick to him when he can. I think it will be normal. Uh, back five with Valerie, I think. Well, that's what Ooh, we hope, anyway. Back five with Valerie. 
Well, you know, McCarthy is in a back oh, five. Goodness. I don't mean like a back five is in defence. A sweeper keeper. He played really well against West Ham. <laughs> Stop it. Um, and then uh, two double pivots, Warprouse, Hoiberg. I think we saw Warprouse coming back, just add, added that motor. Armstrong and Buffal are our two only available wingers. And uh, Shane Long for an outlet, Danny Ings for the, for the goals. I think it's pretty nailed on, isn't it? Any variation in that can you think of? No, but what what's sticking point then for us? Where do you think Norwich could get a goal, could get the win, could get a point? A point really wouldn't help them. But you know, if, if there's any way that Norwich will win, and there's a definite chance because they they've battled well in the last few weeks. Yes, they got a disappointing result against Sheffield United, <laughs> but two good wins against Tottenham and Leicester. Where do you think they can profit from in our team? Uh, keep going even after. Uh, even after 80, 85 minutes. Please. Yeah, yeah. Go Just on. go hell for leather around. If we if we've got a uh, a result so far about 80 minutes, just go hell for leather and we'll eventually crack. I think it's our main thing, and I I think it's just composure, especially with uh, our recent kind of results. I think if as long as they're relentless and they keep going, they can they can cause us issues. So yeah, I think that's my my worries. You mentioned it yourself too. Well, what do you reckon is a uh, your worry against Norwich then? Yeah, I think I think Danny Murphy said it that they're probably going to be the best team to finish bottom of the league. And like, you, and I was watching a program called Football Daily, or sorry, a channel called Football Daily, and they they said a good point that in no other league was almost any team, not any player, sorry, but a te- a, be- a a player's a team's best player get into any team there, in the actually. league. So if you look at Buendia, he'd probably get into the Liverpool squads or like in the, into the top six. Mm. He'd probably get into the Liverpool squad because you know he's a very good creative midfielder. He he's hasn't scored a goal this year. Yeah, but he's a creative midfielder. If you look at the, if you look at his underlying statistics, who's that? Uh, Who are you about? Buendia. He's, yeah, got he's, one of the, he's got seven assists this year, but uh, I wouldn't say top six. But he's one season of seven assists. If you have a look, he's the. I think he at one point he was the highest. Um, Deep line passes, or the no, not the deep line. Uh, final third passes and uh, most chances uh, created. Yeah, yeah, things like right. that. He was stocks above everyone else, and yeah, you had to look at the, the stats in um, the Premier League. You know, all the the black box and stuff that they got there. He was headline in all of them. So I think if you actually have a look at chance created, uh, chances created by ninety and stuff like that, he's really up there, isn't he? Too. So I think mm. statistically, he is highlighted as a very good player, and I think he is one of their biggest threats that they do have. So I think, I think it definitely it's just them it. playing through the lines because you saw mm. it against um, Newcastle a bit. The amount of space in the middle that we sort of gave Gale was yeah. quite concerning. When he got Pookie, he's actually scored a handful of Premier League goals this season. You've got the quality to match it well as well with Todd Cantwell and Wendy and putting those balls into the box, putting them right into the, the dangerous areas. I yeah. think that's, that's a main concern. And like you said also... It, as long as they keep competing from the 80th to the 90th minute, there's a good chance they'll get a clear-cut opportunity. And I think that, one thing as chance. well, I don't know where, if they if they play out the press and can switch it into the space on the opposite side, because as we all squish and move over, I think it, it means that everyone's all in different positions and they're filling. If they switch the play, we've got that feeling of kind of unrest and uneasiness. And I think that almost came a little bit. So when Maxim was closing us, the ball was kind of bobbling around. Valerie didn't get it cleared. Maxim was straight in. And I don't, I don't think that's necessarily to do with the shape, but I think it's to do, you know, like if they they put pressure and they can move the ball quick and play out the press, they can they can pose a danger and they're right back at our back four because our press is so aggressive. And I think that's... But the thing know, is, if everyone knows their duty and if we press well, yeah. it doesn't matter what shape we're in. Because mm. because we know that Hoyberg and Will Prowse can cover up both fullbacks. We know that Armstrong can slot in in the centre. We know that Shane Long, Danny Ings can drop deeper. So as as much as like switching the play really would affect it, and maybe that would cause a little bit of unrest, a little bit of movement from our defences and like that. We know that we've got players that can cover and that can do the roles right. Then instead of thinking of how they can break us down, how can we break them down with the press? What happens if the press is actually successful? Yeah, and it's true. Get the ball out. Thanks for watching. This clip came from our latest podcast. If you want to listen to the full version, links to it are in the description. And finally, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and make sure you subscribe with the bell on to never miss an upload.